Stop talking about comic books or I'll kill you. I don't care if the Hulk could defeat the man of steel. Hey there, comic fam. Bullseye Bob here, and welcome to Everything Comics. And this is the 42nd episode of Having Comics with My Coffee. This is the show where I get together with you here in the Bob Cave, have some great coffee, and I talk about the comic books I picked up this week. And of course, this week is uh, the comic books that came out on Wednesday, October 21st. Uh, it's a, an amazing day here in Portland. It's uh, been a kind of a cold weekend here. Um, the as the uh, weather's starting to turn, uh, but that's okay. Um, it's uh, the sun is out right now, and uh, I can tell it's going to be a pretty awesome weekend. So we have a lot of great comics to go over this week. Uh, I mean, this is a great time to be into comics. I'm just going to keep saying it over and over again, and uh, I'm just loving week over week uh, all the different books that are coming out, and I uh, can't wait to get into today's books. And uh, so we'll just get right into it. But uh, first, let's talk about the coffee that we're drinking. Uh, today, I'm just having uh, my regular uh, Keurig Donut Shop coffee. Of course, uh, normally the coffee is uh, brought to us by uh, the Refuge Coffee House, which is at 9217 Southeast Foster Road. Uh, they're one of the best coffee houses in Portland. Uh, definitely uh, one of my go-tos. And the uh, proprietors, Keith and Kim, uh, they're amazing people, and uh, we love the refuge. If you're ever out here in Portland, uh, give me a look up, and uh, coffee's on me. We'll get together. We'll uh, talk about comics, talk about whatever you want, and uh, but it'll be a good time. Um, here recently, I had a fellow YouTuber out, uh, uh, Brian from Comic Crazy, and uh, because of uh, you know some of the circumstances that was happening in my life, I wasn't able to get together with him, uh, and I really regretted that because uh, I really dig the brother, and uh, it was it was an, it was a great opportunity, but it just alas it didn't happen. And so Brian, if you're watching, next time you come out, coffee's on me. We'll go to the refuge, and uh, we'll just do what we do brother and we'll, we'll we'll talk comics but uh anyway you guys if you haven't been over to comic crazy definitely go check out his channel uh he's got some great stuff over there uh one of which is his comic book jeopardy show which is a lot of fun it's a great idea go check it out uh you'll see uh past episodes all the the portland comics crew has been on there uh and uh, except for damien uh but uh, i'm sure he'll be on there soon but anyway check out comic crazy he's a great guy so before we get into our books, I have some announcements. Uh, as always with the announcements, uh, if you wanna skip those and go straight to the reviews, there'll be a timestamp that pops up on the screen so that you can just go ahead and go there. No problem in doing that. I know some people don't like the announcements and uh, wanna be able to uh, make sure we're catering to them as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, get into our first announcement. And uh, the first one is, um, I haven't forgotten about the battle draft, folks. Um, because of things that happened in the last couple of months, we had to postpone a couple of times our last battle draft. I'm talking about the Battle of Hell's Kitchen. I haven't announced um, the next date going forward uh, because I'm kind of waiting for Halloween to be over with. Of course, uh, one of the mainstays for the battle draft is Robbie from Pop Culture Philosophers. He's doing an amazing job with his horror fest right now. And uh, this, this week is probably gonna be one of his busiest weeks of the year. And so I'm gonna let that uh, play out. And then once that's over with, we'll get together with the guys and uh, we'll give a new date for the battle draft. And uh, we're gonna make it happen, folks. And so stay tuned for that. And then next up, uh, I realize I'm on my 42nd episode, which means I'm coming up on my 50th episode, folks. Can you believe that? I, I, I never thought that I would get this far, uh, 50 episodes in, uh, and I'm really, really happy about it. And uh, so I just kind of wanted to highlight in the next couple, next couple of episodes, I'll start to highlight some giveaways that we're going to have uh, inaugurating the 50th episode. And uh, so stay tuned for that. I'm, I'm going to have some great stuff to give away. And uh, I'll give you all the instructions that you need on how to enter for those giveaways. Uh, but wow, 50, 50 episodes, folks. And I'll just say in advance, thank you so very much for supporting the channel. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, the, like I said before, the unintended consequences of getting into uh, this 
particular hobby has been uh, the people uh, that I've met and the relationships that have started. Uh, you guys are amazing and I just thank you guys so much and I'm just proud to be a part of this amazing community. So anyway, stay tuned, 50th episode's coming up and we'll have some cool stuff to give away. And uh, I, as happy as I am about that, uh, my next announcement rolls right into the fact that this Monday, is the 100th episode of the brand new Coffee and Comics show on the Comics with Bueller channel. Now, as you know, uh, I am on that show with my good buddy Bueller. Uh, we get together every week and we talk about some of the hottest topics in comics. And uh, this Monday, 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time is going to be a special time because it's his 100th episode. Can you believe that? And uh, look, the, the show's already been filmed and we had such a good time filming it. Uh, his uh, daughter Paige is gonna be uh, on the screen with us and uh, we got a ton of giveaways to give away. And uh, it, it's just an, uh, just an awesome, awesome privilege just to be a part uh, of that show and uh, to uh, hang out with my good buddy Bueller and uh, talk about comics week over week. And uh, so, man, 100th episode. You guys don't wanna miss this one. Uh, so tune in, be there, be square, folks. Okay, so that's it for the announcements. And uh, as you know, before we get into our reviews, we always start with our cover of the week. And this week's cover of the week is brought to you by TKO Studios. Uh, down in the description, there's a link to their website. Go check them out. Uh, they have the pre-release for all of the third wave of comic books that, they've, uh, that they're releasing. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff there. Uh, I'm very, very excited about this. Uh, they're going to be sending me some pre-release uh, copies for us to review. And uh, I'm, I can't wait to get them. Go check out their website. If there's anything that you see that you want to buy there, uh, when you check out, make sure you use the code EVERYTHING20 and you get 20% off your purchase. That's an awesome, awesome deal. Uh, like I said, their thir third wave of comic books, I think there's three or four different ones that are coming out. And then the, one of the things that's really exciting me is they're going to come out with a bunch of one-shot horror comic books uh, besides one of their titles being an anthology. Very excited about this. Uh, as as uh, this starts to unfold and come out, like I said, uh, they're going to be uh, giving us review copies and we'll probably be giving those away, which would be really cool. Uh, but uh, TKO is putting out a lot of great stuff and uh, they're definitely a great partner of the show. So this week's cover of the week. And uh, look, I, I went through every comic book cover that you can think of and I just can't get over this one. Uh, Daredevil number 23, and I'm talking about the Alex Ross Timeless variant. Uh, of course, in the last couple of weeks, he's been coming out with all these great variants. This one is one of the better ones. Uh, you know, I, I don't think all of them are great. Some of them feel like you know they're kind of rushed compared to his normal work. That's okay. E even his rushed work is, is, is amazing. Uh, I think so far the Silver Surfer has been my favorite. Uh, but this particular uh, cover with... My boy Red, uh, I, you know, he, he does them a little thicker than I would like, but it is a great cover and one that's just striking, one that I'm going to be putting up here on the Wall of Fame uh, here pretty soon. And, uh, but there it is in all its glory. I just love this cover. Uh, Alex Ross, you can't go wrong with him. Everything that he does, uh, I mean, I know he's exclusive to Marvel right now, but the stuff he did with DC is amazing. Uh, and, I mean, just about everything that he comes out with, I absolutely love. So there you have it. Daredevil number 23, Alex Ross, timeless variant in all its glory. Okay, so let's get on to our reviews. And our first book this week is Daredevil number 23 by Marvel Comics. That's right. It's written by Chip Zdarsky and the art by Michael Cicchetto. We've got Michael Cicchetto back, and I just love the way he draws uh, Daredevil. Uh, but this is this is awesome. We haven't had uh, the main series uh, for a little bit. They, they uh, had a, a lull, then they had the annual that came out. And uh, so now here we are uh, with the uh, next issue uh, in the series. And oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I, I love this issue. Uh, the first thing that's going to come out as you're reading it is uh, the way Chip Zdarsky writes this. You can definitely tell that he has a passion for these characters. And I'm not talking about just Daredevil. I'm talking about the Kingpin. I'm talking about uh, the way he does Spider-Man. Because uh, Spider-Man's inside of this issue. Uh, he does this thing where he gives some characters their time to shine. Uh, pays beautiful fan service to them. And uh, you can definitely tell that he loves these characters. And uh, his dialogue, the way he writes, 
Uh, I've just been loving this series from the beginning. Uh, I love some of the other stuff that he's come out with. The uh, X-Men vs. Fantastic Four series that he recently did was amazing. Uh, I'm loving Stillwater, uh, which I will review later on in the show. Uh, but Zdarsky is doing a bang-up job on Daredevil, and I just love it month over month. And this was a dang good issue. So this book centers on Matt uh, wanting to tie up some loose ends before he gets uh, put on trial as Daredevil uh, for the accidental murder of that young man at the beginning of this whole run. And uh, so uh, one of the things that he needs to tie up is uh, Kingpin and his underlings. He wants to make sure that they know that whether he goes to prison or not, he's still going to make their lives hell because he's got friends. And that's where kind of Spidey comes into play inside of this. And uh, so after this interchange, we finally have Matt and Spidey getting together and working out their differences because during this run, they've been on the outs. Uh, Spidey came and basically told them, you need to stop doing what you're doing or I'm taking you out. And then later on when they came back together, uh, Matt basically told them, get the hell out of here because I don't need you. Uh, and so now we have this scene where they are basically confessing kind of where they were at when those things happened. And uh, there's such a beautiful and cool moment that happens in this book. Touched my heart. Uh, just a, a, an embrace between two friends. And then uh, these two sitting on the rooftops just talking until the dawn comes. Uh, it was such an awesome, awesome scene. And the way it played out, uh, you know, touched all the, the, you know, the, all the feelings that I had. And uh, I was just smiling the whole time that I was reading it because he just writes it so well. Chichetto's artwork is absolutely amazing. Uh, my panel of the week uh, comes from this book as well. Uh, who would have guessed the whole show should be just go ahead and just make it all about Daredevil. Uh, I didn't plan it that way. It just, that's just exactly the way it happened. Uh, but this is an amazing read and I absolutely loved it. There's a scene inside of here uh, where Kingpin goes off on Hammerhead, glorious. Uh, and there's some stuff with uh, uh, Matt and Foggy that was pretty awesome. And uh, it's just an amazing read. Uh, and Chip Zdarsky just continues to put out uh, month over month uh, one of the greatest runs of Daredevil to date. And uh, I think when we get to the end of this, it's going to go down in history. At the end of this book, somebody shows up. And I'm telling you, I told you guys not to sleep on that annual because Mike Murdoch is now in play, guys. And I think it's going to get really messy and really good here coming up. So let's see what happens. Anyway, Daredevil number 23, check it out. Okay, so on to our next book, and it's Dead Day number four by Aftershock Comics. This one written by Ryan Perot and the art by Egene Bornyakov. I think that's the way you say it. I'm getting better at just letting that roll off the tongue, uh, but that's... That's the dude. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, by far, this is the best issue in the series so far. Uh, this series has uh, a great concept, uh, which is basically there is a day that happens. I think it's every year or every two years. I, I forget which it is, but uh, it's, it's a pretty special event because the dead rise from their graves uh, and uh, they, they basically interact with the living. And uh, it was really cool to see how Ryan Perot built around this event uh, as if it was real world happening right now. And we got to see how the world reacts to an event like this. Uh, some of people consider it a holiday and they celebrate it. Other people, they barricade their doors because they don't want anything to do with it. Some people create a religion around it. Uh, and, and there's just all these different ways that people uh, you know, react to this, this thing that just started happening because of the stars aligning a certain way. And uh, now it happens uh, on a regular interval, uh, dead day. And uh, so we got to see that in the first issue. And then over the last couple of issues, uh, we've had the story kind of move along with character development. And uh, I mean, it's been kind of slow, but if I really think back on it, it really hasn't been because uh, he's really been bringing us up to this point. All I know is the writing has been masterful because all of that character development really pays off in this book. Uh, I really had a, a great time reading it. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things that happen, and I don't think that those cool things would have paid off as much unless 
uh, you know, the writer would have got us invested in the characters the way that he has. I don't want to say too much about what happens because it would give it away, and this is something that you definitely need to experience for yourself. Uh, but month over month, Dead Day has been an amazing read, and I would say uh, it's gotten even better, and I really can't wait to see where they go with book five. Uh, this is another one of those by Aftershock Comics that's really opening my eyes. And uh, this one is definitely one you don't want to sleep on. So Dead Day number four, an amazing read this month. Uh, definitely check it out. Okay, so on to our next book, and that's Scumbag number one by Image Comics. This one written by Rick Remender. Artwork by Louis LaRosa and the coloring by Moreno Denicio. Uh, so nope, nopers, uh-uh, ain't going there. No. <laughs> uh, this book is just not for me, folks. Uh, and I'm kind of torn when I say that, uh, and I'll tell you why. The artwork inside of this book is absolutely amazing. I've never heard of Louis LaRosa before. I'm definitely going to be putting him on my radar now. Uh, the artwork inside of this is freaking phenomenal. Uh, there is, not only is it is it awesome, uh, but there is a fluidity to the action scenes inside of this book that I kind of always look for in comics. I think this is the way uh, action scenes should be uh, drawn and portrayed. Uh, in your face, there's a, a absolute fluidity to the fluidity absolute fluidity to the lines uh, which I, I love I'll put a couple of pictures up on the screen so you can see it uh, and it's it's just amazing the colors uh, by Moreno uh, Denicio uh, these two coming together uh, make this masterful piece and uh, but and, and like I said I'm torn this reminds me of some comics that I'll actually show on the brand new coffee and comic show uh, on Monday where uh, I have a few comics in my collection uh, from Tim Vigil called Faust. These were comics back in the day uh, that I just thought the artwork was amazing. Uh, but it is pornographic almost, and it is satanic, and it's just stuff that I, I don't get into or read. It's just too far into that arena that I, I, I want to go, uh, and it's, it's, just, it's just not my bag of tea. But I can't refute how amazing the artwork is inside of it. So for nostalgia purposes, I did buy a few of the Faust books to have back in my collection since you know my old collection was sold. Got them for a really cheap price. Uh, but this, this book, Scumbag, had, gives me the same feeling that that does. It is raunchy, it is um, nasty, and it, it just has things inside of it that I don't think should be glorified. Uh, guys, look, uh, you know some of my past you know I'm a pastor now, but I did at one particular point in my life, I was homeless, I was an intravenous drug user, and praise God, by His grace, I overcame all that, and I just don't think, uh, you know, intravenous drug use should be elevated in a comic book uh, to be kind of, uh, um, not celebrated, but elevated to the point to where it's not given the weight that it should be, because it's a very serious issue. Uh, anyway, that's just one of the things that just you know hit me the wrong way, and then it's just, it's just nasty. It's just a nasty book. So I don't think I'll be picking this up a month over month, but I do want to say uh, that for some people, you know, I'm not going to knock you if that's your bag of tea, go for it. But the artwork inside of this is truly amazing. I, I will say that out of everything that's come out this year so far, uh, this is some of the best stuff I've seen. I wish a lot more comic books. Uh, had this look and feel and, uh, and and composition to it because it's 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 truly uh, uh, it's, it's it's just a work of art. So there you go, scumbag number one. Check it out for yourself. Let me know what you think in the comments. But like I said, it's just not for me. Uh uh. <laughs> okay, on to our next book, and that's something is killing the children. Issue number eleven by Boom Studios. This one written by James Tinian and the art by Werther Deladera. Uh, look, this just, just continues to be a, one of my favorite reads month over month. Uh, there has not been a bad issue yet inside of this series, and Boom Studio, as you know, I keep saying it, they have been killing it. Last month, we had a uh, pretty brutal issue. Uh, I mean, it was so in-your-face brutal, 
and it really brought us back to the fact that yes something is killing the children <laughs> and pretty brutally uh, and uh, this month there's kind of a reprieve from that type of action but it's no less an amazing read uh, we get a little more uh, on our main character Erica and the direction that she's going uh, setting up uh, the finale for uh, this you know particular part of the run uh, which is the big showdown with the creatures uh, but not only that we get a lot more about the um, the secret society that she belongs to the house of slaughter and uh, how they're reacting to everything that's going on in the town where Erica's at and it looks like they're sending people after her and Erica knows it so not only are we gonna have this showdown uh, between her and these creatures that she's going to take out but she's going to have to deal uh, with her co her uh, compatriots inside of the secret society because it's obvious that they're trying to shut her down for whatever reason. And uh, I can't wait. It, it's just month, like I said, month over month, it's been an amazing read. James Tinian, uh, his writing, I just love it. Uh, and I mean, he, in multiple different settings, uh, you know, the way he's been writing Batman has been incredible. Uh, Department of Truth, oh my gosh. I can't wait for next week because uh, issue number two comes out of that. And then, of course, month over month, Something is Killing the Children uh, has definitely been one of Boom's best books, and I've been loving it. And Werther Deladera, the way he does this artwork, uh, if it was any other setting, I don't think I would love it as much, but it works so well for this comic book, and I love it. So there you have it, Something is Killing the Children, number 11. Uh, this is a book that if you haven't been on it, where have you been? This is one you should be on. It's so amazing. It's really good. That brings us to our next book, which is Batman 101. This one by DC Comics, also written by James Tinian and the artwork by Gillum March. Uh, so the first thing so right away when I opened up this book, I could tell right away it wasn't Jorge Jimenez. Uh, for most of the book, uh, that's not a problem. But in the beginning, I had some, some real issues because... Uh, for, for whatever reason, the way the either, either his line work or the inking, uh, Batman and Lucius Fox look like a couple of old men. Uh, I'll put an image up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, and it was kind of off-putting at first. I'm like, what, what the heck's going on here? <laughs> uh, but for the rest of the uh, book, it, it, it kind of evens out and it, it didn't get have that same feel. But I could tell right away that this wasn't Jorge Jimenez, which kind of made me sad because I love the artwork he was doing in this book. Uh, very glad to have him for as long as we did. I hope he comes back because I think he does Batman uh, amazingly well. Uh, so uh, this book is uh, pretty much in the aftermath of the Joker War. Just a lot of setup, uh, giving us kind of a direction on where we're going next. Uh, we kind of have uh, Batman making a decision uh, to not l work out of the Batcave anymore where he's got all his high tech. Uh, it seems like he's going to go more organic and he's going to live in the city uh, in a brownstone of all things. And uh, the feeling that I got from this is it kind of uh, feels like what they're doing with the title character is kind of drumming him down uh, to go the direction that the new movie is going, uh, which is kind of a more organic feel, not so high tech, more detective, uh, kind of getting back to his roots. And I think uh, what they're doing is using the vehicle of the Joker War, breaking him down, taking all his money away. Uh, and bringing him back to a place where he needs to be more hands-on with Gotham. Uh, they use that vehicle uh, to uh, kind of bring this in alignment with where the movies are going next. That's my feel. Let me know what you think about that, but I really think that that's why they're doing this. Uh, beyond that, uh, we get a little more into uh, Bruce and, and Selena's relationship and where they possibly want to go in the future. We get a little more of uh, the uh, clown killer, if I'm, is that his name? Uh, clown Hunter. Uh, we get a little more with that character. I think that's going to play out a little more prevalent. Uh, he's now been hunting down all these henchmen that were part of the Joker War. Uh, and uh, so that's definitely something in play that Batman needs to deal with. And then, of course, uh, we have the great setup for the next issue, uh, which is the new character called the Ghost Maker. Love the look of this character. Can't wait to see where they go with that. But this book is pretty much all set up, which is kind of what you expect after a big, huge event like they've just had with the Joker War. All in all, it's still very solid writing by James Tinian. And uh, look, this is one of my favorite books month over month, so I'm going to be getting it anyway. Uh, but definitely check this one out. Uh, it's, it's just the next step on where we're going. All right, so on to our next book, and that's Venom number 29 by Marvel Comics. This one by Donnie Cates. And the art on this one by Luke Ross. 
Uh, well, here we are at issue 30, and things are really heating up. Uh, I've been loving this run by Donny Cates. Um, you know, whether or not uh, it's being blown up by the speculators, I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, you know, we got 5,500 different variants that come out month over month now. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, the prices on some of these books have just skyrocketed because of all this speculation. Uh, I mean, you can't refute that there's some huge things going on with this book, and it's mainly due to people doing speculation. Uh, but whether that's happening or not, I have been loving this run. It's just been a great read month over month. So in this book, we find out a lot more about a lot of different things. Uh, one of the first things is we find out, and it's confirmed, that um, Virus is actually uh, Mac Gargan, Scorpion. And I know that that uh, deflated a bunch of uh, uh, speculators out there. Uh, be, you can see the price of Venom 25 going, pew, <laughs> start to plummet because it's just the Scorpion. Uh, anyway, I like the new take that they've uh, had uh, with that character and uh, how it played out from stuff that happened before when a Scorpion had the uh, Venom symbiote. And uh, so, you know, I, I really think that Donny Cates uh, did great in tying that all, all, all back in. But the next thing that we find out is that Codex in, in this, this alternate world that they're in that is actually Dylan. Uh, and we find out that uh, kind of looks like um, Codex is kind of the null of this world and, uh, and kind of made him out to be kind of like the Antichrist of that universe because he destroys everything uh, with this ability that he has in being able to manipulate symbiotes, birth them, and uh, also control them remotely. And uh, so how this is all gonna play out, I don't know. Uh, I, you know I, whether or not our universe goes the same direction as that universe, uh, it's a lot of fun to speculate on what's gonna happen, uh, but we're getting closer, folks. We're just you know, a short you know, month and a half away uh, from the King in Black coming, and uh, I'm, I'm on board. I can't wait till we get there. Uh, but I don't want to speculate on what's going to happen because I got a ton, a ton of theories, some which have played out, some which, you know, have, have not. <laughs> All I know is month over month, the journey on getting here has been a blast. And I think this whole King in Black um, major event that's going to happen will be no less of a blast when we get there. And so let's see how this plays out, folks. Okay, so on to our next book, and it's Miles to Go, number two. This one also by Aftershock Comics. Uh, this one written by B. Claymore and the art by uh, Stephen Mulner. Uh, now, okay, last month, uh, this is a book that I didn't get to review because of the issues that I had, uh, but I did read my comics last month, and uh, this is one of those titles that stood out, and so now it's definitely on my pull list. Uh, if you um, haven't read this comic yet, the premise of it is, is there's a girl named Amara, uh, that when she was really young, a young girl, she was trained uh, to be a killer. And not only was she trained, but she took to it like a fish in water and she's really good at it. And uh, where we pick up in this book is kind of years later where she's left that life behind and she's tried to live a normal life and she's a single mom now. So in the midst of this, she gets a message uh, from one of her old colleagues. I think it's one of the uh, people who trained her from way back when. And uh, in this meeting, we kind of find out that the NSA is now looking for her because when she leaves, these people come in and actually kill that guy, which sets all these, all these different things in motion. Uh, and that's kind of where we were in the first book. This book continues the story. Uh, we have uh, those NSA guys have sent some people out to kill her. Uh, the death of that original guy uh, sent one of his colleagues to come and uh, um, you know, kind of watch out after her. And uh, so we have this confrontation where uh, all of a sudden she's pulling a gun and having to defend herself and this other guy uh, kind of saves her butt. What we find out inside of this book is that uh, uh, the people that trained her were actually all ex-vets uh, from previous wars that had been brought together to be a sort of uh, assassination squad that the government was secretly funding. And some of these uh, people that she uh, was told to go kill way back when uh, were actually missions uh, of this organization. And uh, for whatever reason, the NSA is looking for her specifically. And uh, it doesn't seem like they're normal government agents because they're pretty ruthless and they're killing people. Anyway, 
This is a great read. Uh, I, I've never heard of B. Clay Moore before, uh, but I mean, for a gritty crime drama, if that's your thing, you'll love this book. Uh, the first book was great. This book was even better. Uh, it's definitely got a um, Ed Brubaker feel to it uh, in, in the writing, and I'm, I'm loving it. So if you haven't checked this one out, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it's a great premise, and uh, the dialogue is great. The action is great, and uh, the intrigue of it, it, it really sucks you in. So uh, miles to go. Number two, I, I'm pretty sure it's pretty easy to still pick up uh, copies of this book, but I'd highly recommend it. All right, next we got Justice League number 55. This one by DC Comics, written by Joshua Williamson and the art by Robson Roca. Uh, okay, here we are. Uh, this is another one of those uh, death metal uh, tie-ins and I've just been loving this crossover event. Uh, I mean, each book that comes out is uh, I mean, it's integral to the main story. Uh, all the tie-ins have been fantastic, uh, and the story just keeps getting better and better, and, uh, and this one is no different. Uh, I wish all major, uh, you know, tie-in events, you know, the, the big two have, I wish they were all done like this. I mean, because this is the way to do it. And uh, just no secret, I've been enjoying the series from the beginning. And uh, I love the fact that we have Joshua Williamson on the Justice League, and this is definitely tying in uh, to the overall narrative of this major event. Okay, so in this book, our heroes are still in the Valley of Starros, which is where they were in the last book, uh, and that's kind of where we begin. And of course, you remember the goal of our uh, of this particular team of heroes is to get to Perpetua's throne, uh, which. Uh, materialize it, it, it disappears and materializes in a different place uh, and it just so happens to be on this earth and they're trying to get to it before it dematerializes again uh, and free the Legion of Doom who are powering the throne um, and and you know I mean really this is kind of a, a, um, a, a steal from the old movie crawl uh, where the villain that was what happened his palace would materialize and dematerialize in different places so you never knew where it was at and it would stay there for 24 hours uh, so this gave me all the vibes from crawl and that's okay because i'm loving this so we still have a bunch of our hero being affected by the mind control element from starro but not all of them and then we have lex luther who comes in and saves the day once again and even though he saves the day and seems to be doing the right thing our heroes still don't trust him can you blame him uh, but really, as the story moves along, we finally get to the actual throne. And, uh, I mean, in a glorious couple of last pages, they have to deal with the Omega Knight. And, I mean, it just in this book also, coming alongside of all the rest of the death metal tie-ins, it really looks like all hope is lost because they're losing on all sides now. This is an amazing read. I had such a fun, fun time reading it. There's some geek out moments. There's some hilarity as well as great action and levity. Uh, I mean, I, I just don't think you can top this event. Of all events that I've ever read, this is the one I'm having the most fun reading, and it just keeps getting better. Joshua Williamson, I'm really, really glad we got him on Justice League. I never thought we'd have him on Justice League. Uh, I don't know if it's just for the death metal tie-ins. I really hope not, because I would love to see him on this title going forward. Love his writing. Uh, but here, this is another really well-written part of you know the, the overall death metal narrative. And you don't want to miss this, folks. If you're not on this, what are you doing? This is an amazing read. Every single bit of it, you got to get on it. It's, it's just so much fun and everything that I would want out of, you know, some of my favorite comics of all times. So there you have it. Definitely be checking out uh, anything you can get from the death metal uh, tie-ins. And if you're confused, give me, give me a PM, give me an email. I'll get you caught up because this is great stuff. Anyway, there you have it, folks. Okay, so our next book is Stillwater Number 2 by Image Comics. This one written by Chip Zdarsky and the art by Ramon Perez. And wow, isn't this a great week in comics? I mean, just in this list alone, we got two books by Chip Zdarsky, we got two books by James Tinian, one by Donnie Cates, another one by Joshua Williamson. I mean, these are some of the greatest 
writers in common. We even got one by Rick Remender, even though it's not my book. Uh, but I mean, these are some of the greatest writers in comics, and it's a great time to be into comic books, folks. But here we are, issue number two of Stillwater, and uh, I, you know, so far I'm just loving this this particular title. Uh, of course, last month. We got um, this brand new series uh, by Chip Zdarsky, and uh, it's about this town called Stillwater, uh, where you have these two friends that are kind of drawn there by a note uh, that was given to one of them. And uh, so they go on this kind of like buddy trek across the country to get to this place. And when they get there, uh, they find out that this particular town uh, is really weird. Uh, this is a place where nobody dies, nobody ages, and uh, if you get hurt, you heal. And so uh, that's what we uh, pick up in this book. Uh, one of the uh, two uh, friends at the end of the original one uh, was killed. And so now we get a little more into the town. And uh, we kind of find out that the um, people who live there, they don't really call it Stillwater. They kind of call it their Eden. Uh, and because, I mean, they can't die. So anyway, in this issue, we get a little more into the background of the town, how it works, uh, how the residents kind of interact with each other, um, and then kind of more, a little bit more on the reason for the note that was originally received. And uh, I won't tell you what that is because it'll give away, I think, a huge part of the story. Uh, but this is a fun read. The dialogue by Zdarsky, uh, I, I just think he's one of the best writers out there. Uh, he even makes... Uh, a real, a funny, I mean, little tiny pun on Daredevil, which wasn't lost on me. Uh, I really love that part of it. And uh, But this is another one of those titles that you don't want to be missing. I really think this is going to be something special. Uh, but definitely be checking out Stillwater. Uh, this is the second issue, and it was a great read this week. Okay, so now we get to my pick of the week, and this week's pick of the week is Dark Knight's Death Metal, The Robin King. This one by DC Comics written by Peter J. Tomasi, another great writer, and uh, the art by Riley Rosmo. I think that's how you say it. If you're surprised at my pick of the week, I was just as surprised. Um, I mean, it, it, it just not... I, I thought I would be picking something else this week. I really did. Uh, but I'm taking a page out of my buddy Damien, uh, a.k.a. Sleepy Reader, uh, out of his book, and I just went with the title that was the most fun to read this week. I don't always do that. Sometimes I go for the wow factor. Sometimes I go for the um, masterful uh, way a book is put together. Uh, you know, it just depends on what's going on. But this week, it had to do with which title I just had the most fun reading, and this was it. So first of all, if you thought you could skip this particular title uh, as just because it's one of the tie-ins uh, to the Dark Knight's Death Metal series, I wouldn't. This really begins right where Dark Knight's Death Metal number four leaves off. Uh, you kind of get uh, that place where our heroes are in despair because it looks like they've just handed over everything to the uh, Darkest Knight. And uh, then the Robin King comes on into play onto the field. And that's when we start to get this whole background story on the origin of the Robin King. We find out that he is uh, also another Bruce Wayne. And in this particular multiverse world, uh, he actually kills his parents and then goes and uses all of the Wayne inheritance to come up with all of the gadgets that he would need on these utility belt and costume to take out every hero that he has ever come across in the universe. And let me tell you, the way Peter J. Tomasi has written this, the creative ways that he takes out some of the most iconic heroes that you've ever read about is so much fun. It's so creative, and 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 it just I mean I I I, I was smiling on every page. So the way Peter J. Tomasi writes this character, he is funny. He's impish. He's not a character that I ever thought that I would ever want or need, but I love this character. Uh, and so anyway, we get into the origin, which brings us all the way up to the end of the book. So now that we've got the full understanding of the capabilities of the Robin King, then we see him go after the big three. And man, I got to tell you, it really looks like our heroes are at their darkest moment. It looks like all hope is lost. The darkest night. That's what it comes down to. The dark night of the soul. And I can't wait to see where we go next because 
something something big's going to happen here to turn things around. You know that it's going to happen. Or will it? We'll see. I don't know. The whole Dark Knight's Death Metal uh, um, uh, major event has just been so much fun to read. This is another one of those titles that you don't want to miss if you've been on the storyline. Uh, and just as a standalone, you can read the origin as a standalone apart from the rest of it and still get the enjoyment of just how amazing the, all the different utilities and ways he takes out all these heroes uh, is. And so, I mean, if, even if you, you know, didn't read the rest of the death metal, death metal event, you can still pick up this book and have a lot of fun reading it. So that's, that's something as well. Anyway, week over week, month over month, while this event's going on, I'm going to savor it while it lasts because it truly is an awesome event and I've just been loving it. So there you have it. That's my pick of the week. Dark Knight's Death Metal, Robin King. Check it out. All right, there you have it, folks. So those are my reviews. Hope you enjoyed them. I sure did. Love reading my comics week over week. And I can't wait for next week. Canto's coming out. Department of Truth is coming out. A lot of great books. It should be an amazing week in comics. You don't want to miss it. Uh, but as you know, we always end the show with my panel of the week. And uh, this week's panel of the week was uh, one of those that I, I had to choose my third choice because uh, the first two choices that really made me geek out were so spoilery. Uh, I, I thought they were pieces of the particular comics that they came out of that I didn't want to spoil for people. These are things that you need to experience for yourself. Uh, and I didn't want to ruin that moment. Uh, so I went with my third choice, and it just so happens to come out of Daredevil number 23. And uh, so in this particular scene, uh, like I said earlier, Daredevil is going uh, to basically the Kingpin and his underbosses to let them know it doesn't matter if he goes to prison or not, he's still going to make their life hell. And there's a scene where Matt is basically standing in front of Kingpin and he's saying those very words, I will make your lives hell. And you have Matt in the foreground and in the background you have the Kingpin just big and foreboding and the way Michael Cicchetto has the uh, page slightly skewed, it's just an epic scene. It made me geek out. There it is. That's the panel of the week in all its glory and I loved it. All right, folks, so that's it. That's having comics with my coffee this week. I hope you enjoyed your comics. I hope you've been enjoying your coffee. I sure have. Uh, thank you so much for uh, watching the show. Uh, if you like the content I'm putting out, please do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, we'll be back next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, of course, this week was a little bit late because I had some technical difficulties, but that's okay. At least I got the episode out. But uh, again, guys, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Remember, support your local comic shop and Excelsior. Take care, folks. I'm gonna rearrange your